Hi everyone, I am Sushmita John. Thank you for joining the fifth AWM student seminar series. Today we have two speakers, uh, Shing Wong and Ishwan Wong. Both of them are from the University of Pittsburgh. So the first speaker is Shing Wong. Shing Wong, you can take over from me now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me show my screen first. Mm. All right. So everyone should be able to see my screen right here, right? Okay, so then I just, uh, okay, so today my topic is analysis of a fully coupled Stokes build transport model and its applications. So today uh, I want to focus on the, uh, like the flow, like the flow of this project uh, instead of a lot of like details or techni uh, technicians. So uh, let's have a quick overview right here. So first I will try to introduce what exactly is a stokes Bill's transport coupled model and what is the application situations right here. And then I will talk briefly about uh, like the equations we're going to use for the model problem. And the main result would be uh, the web host is of the uh, weak formulation. And um, I, will uh, I will talk a little bit about an error analysis for the corporate problem. And then we will sh I will show you guys a little bit like the conversion test and also the applications. So I will basically show two different uh, applications. So the first one would be a blood flow model. Uh, and the second one would be a channel like the underground water channel. So we will try to uh, calculate uh, the underground water contaminants like mercury. Uh, something like that. So uh, first, so what is exactly a uh, Stokes build and transport corporate model? So I have like three very typical examples. So the first one is the underground water flow uh, through the channels. And we can see like clearly like the each of the cavities is a poor elastic uh, model uh, because it allows the fluid through uh, the different layer of the underground. And also it has some sort uh, of elasticity inside of it. So actually this is a very uh, typical like uh, fluid and structure model problem. And it involves uh, a, lot of, a lot of like considerations along the interface of the water and also the structural regions right here. And also uh, there will be like applications in the petroleum engineering and also the famous blood flow uh, and also the low density lipoprotein accumulations. So uh, it has been like uh, like high uh, attentions to this kind of blood flows uh, because like, since the high pace of modern life, right? So like the heart issues has been a major health problem uh, for the modern life. So if we could like calculate uh, or identify or like diagnose uh, the vessel vision, so it will help us a lot. And also this kind of model can be applied to calculating the drug delivery problem. So, uh, so actually, um, like my simulations will focus on this type of models. So here we can see clearly the vessel is a poor elastic structure and inside it's just the blood flow. And also there will be like buildups along the vessel. So there will be like uh, different types of regions. So we need to like use uh, the discontinuous parameters to control over the different types of the uh, regions right here. So let's take a look at the equations I'm going to use for the fully copper Stokes view trans model or uh, transport model. So first the Stokes model. So uh, normally we would say like the Stokes equation is linear. However, if we consider the non-Newtonian properties right here, so the mu C here uh, is the viscosity uh, of the fl of fluid. And also the viscosity depends on the concentration uh, of some like chemical uh, specific, uh, species uh, dissolved in the fluid. Uh, so actually this uh, equation becomes uh, non-linear because the involve of the non-Newtonian terms right here. 
and also in the pro-elastic region, we're going to use the uh, build system. And the second one, uh, because we also consider the viscosity uh, in the Darcy equation, so which means this term is actually again a nonlinear term right here. Uh, and also we have like uf is the velocity for the fluid velocity and also pf uh, is the velocity pressure right here and also up uh, is the velocity of the fluid in the structure so uh, here this is the free fluid region and here this is the uh, proelastic region so here that is the velocity for the fluid uh, like penetrate through the proelastic region and also pp is the uh, like to, uh, the uh, the pressure terms right here. And A type P is the displacement of the structure. And also if we consider the two regions together, so we could actually introduce uh, the transport equation. So the transport equation itself is actually very difficult to solve uh, because it has a lot of like nonlinear terms right here. And also there will be like research uh, like on the one way coupling model. However, what I'm learning, what I'm like studying is a fully coupled, which means the concentration uh, would infect the whole fluid region. And also uh, the fluid region would infect uh, the transport equation, actually the propagation of the uh, concent uh, concentration of some like species uh, right here. So the U here. So in different regions, like in omega F, the U would be UF. In omega P, so the U would be UP. So actually this uh, system here is actually very nonlinear. So it's actually very difficult to analyze the problem like directly. So we will see like later, like how uh, I'm going to cover or uh, we'll address this, uh, this nonlinear issues right here. Second, uh, let's consider all the initial and also boundary and interface conditions uh, because the two regions are actually connected to each other. So they are not overlapping with each other. They just have, uh, they just connected with each other over the interface. So uh, the initial conditions need to satisfy a compactable condition. So I will talk a little bit like later. And also the boundary conditions is just like very normal boundary conditions. So the most important is the uh, interface conditions. Uh, because the two different types of regions are actually connecting with each other. So the interface condition is very important. So the first one I'm going to use is the uh, conservation of mass. And also let's take this in, uh, in mind. Let's keep this in uh, a little bit. So we have a term like up.np right here. So I'll talk about a little bit like later. So there is actually a issue with up.np. So if you want to use a mixed finite element mass and also the second one is the balance of the normal stress and the third one is the balance of the momentum and the last one is the famous bjs like sleep with friction terms right here so after that let's go over a little bit like the subway spaces and notations i'm going to use like repeatedly so uh there is only one i need to like stress a little bit so that is the capital vp so this space is actually for the darcy space so you can see clearly so i only ask like the Darcy velocity in H deep space. So actually I, it's not in H1. So I require like less regularity space for this one. Uh, so capital VF is the fluid velocity. Uh, so it's actually H1. So it will has like enough regularity. So I will talk about like later. So the key point is, so if the Darcy velocity so does not have enough smoothness. So on the interface, so by the trace theorem, so it will has an issue like later. So I will talk about like later. So the issue is, so if we uh, integration bypass for the modern problem, so the problem is, so for the Darcy uh, equation, so integration bypass, so the, velo so the uh, Darcy velocity, so UP here, so it's only in H diff, it's not in H1, so it's not well defined on the interface because on the interface, you have to uh, actually consider the trace theorem. So to figure or to address the discrepancy uh, of the smoothness for the Darcy velocity. So we need to introduce a Lagrange multiplier right here. 
to actually to cover the problem, uh, like the UP does not have like enough smoothness on the interface. So actually, uh, they introduce so the after introducing the logarithm multiplier, it doesn't affect the whole system like too much. So uh, it has a lot of like benefits. So the first one is so in the code. So actually in the coding or the algorithms. So we're actually using the parallel uh, decomposition algorithm. So it won't cause too much trouble in actually the coding systems. And the second one. So if we like introduce the Lagrange multiplier, so it actually like can uh, provide a local uh, mass conservation for the UP. So actually it increased the uh, regularity on the interface. And third benefit is, so uh, normally if you don't have like, like high enough regularity on the interface, you have to introduce another like penalty uh, parameters right here. But here we're not uh, using uh, the penalty method uh, so actually it's a benefit right here. So because we don't use the penalty method. So normally the penalty method would cause uh, the computational or discrepancy or discretized uh, numerical cost into all the like the systems. So we don't want to use that. So here the P, the problem uh, is the uh, like the weak formulation. Uh, so after all the integration bypass and also introducing the Lagrange multiplier uh, and also like cooperate of all the boundary conditions. So we actually have this type uh, of uh, non-linear weak formulations right here. So all the non-linear terms I have. So uh, and also it's a fully coupled model. So uh, the coupled terms I put a like red terms right here. So here, so uh, non-linear term, and also uh, it's called the model like fully coupled and also non-linear terms. Here, this is a non-linear term. And the operator D here itself is a non-linear operator and it is like times the grad C here. So this term actually caused a lot of trouble in later. So we will talk about like a little bit. So this is a uh, non-linear term, non-linear term. And this is actually a source term. I put a red U here because the U here is actually related to the Stokes built models right here. So this problem like impossible to solve directly. There's no such theory to help us to do that. So uh, the idea is, so the non-linear problem we can solve. So what we can solve is actually a linearized formulation. So actually I'm introducing all the non-linear terms, like uh, I substitute the C here by a smooth enough gamma, and I substitute like the U here by uh, a smooth enough like uh, C, uh, theta right here. So I could actually decouple uh, the whole system. And also uh, this, the system here is actually linearized. So uh, we can see that like all the blue terms are actually data here. So this is a linearized formulation. So in this, formulation, we could actually have a lot of like method to solve. And later on, if we do a fixed point iteration, so we could actually make uh, this system converge to the original system, like the non-linear systems we have. So let's take a look at the flowchart. Actually, this is a very big problem. So the idea is how we decouple the problem and address its difficulties like step by step. So that is the flowchart um, of solving the fully nonlinear and like fully coupled uh, like Stokes built transport model. So the step one is so the original like nonlinear system like very difficult to solve. Like it is impossible to solve, I can say. So the step one is we need to linearize it. So the linearize the continuous weak formulation, uh, still we can do that. So uh, I want to like introduce the linearize the semi-discrete formulation. So it's a glucking problem. Uh, so I discretize it in space, uh, but I keep it like continuous in time. So it is just a semi-discrete formulation. And also uh, the linearized term are viscosity terms in Stokes and Dusty, and also the velocity terms in the uh, transport equations. So for this term, uh, it's linear. 
and also it's fully decoupled. So we could actually use a DAE system, so uh, differentiation uh, algebraic equation theorem to ensure the existence of this uh, uh, lurking problem. And also uh, by introducing the in soup condition, uh, we could uh, ensure we uh, confirm the uniqueness of the solution of this LGP problem. And also I'm going to show the stability result. So the stability result, uh, we can like use the weak compactness to pass the limit in space to actually have uh, the existence and the uniqueness and even stability result for the continuous question. So after we ensure the well postness of the linearized weak formulation, we could actually use a contraction algorithm. So that is step three to have the original, uh, to have the well postness of the very original question. Uh, and also yet, so we didn't talk about the lurking problem of the original problem, right? So it is still very difficult to talk about the error analysis and then so the last step is I consider the lurking problem of the original question. And um, I introduce some like auxiliary problems like, in, like using some like uh, a priori like error estimations. And here, so let's first consider uh, the finite element space I'm going to use for the linearized semi-discrete uh, model problem. So first for the UF, so the fluid uh, velo uh, fluid velocity and also the fluid pressure. So I'm going to use the into stable uh, like finite element space. So here is some like uh, famous examples like the Taylor hood, the mini element. So there are a lot of like uh, choice you can like take. So the second one is because I'm using mixed uh, formulation for the Darcy equation. So actually I'm using the in soup stable like, uh, so in my simulation, I'm using the rabbit Thomas um, finite element space. And also for the displacement in the build system, I'm using like continuous like P1 with P2 Lagrange uh, finite element space. And also for the Lagrange multiplier, so I'm just using like piecewise constant. Uh, so it's actually well defined. And also for the concentration, uh, because I, I didn't want to introduce in like too much trouble or like by introducing the discontinuous lurking. So I'm just using the continuous Lagrange finite element space. And also, this is the linearized Galerkin weak formulation. So basically, I just put the H everywhere instead of the data. So the gamma and the data here are became data. Instead of the data, I put the H everywhere. So it's the Galerkin problem of the linearized weak formulation. And then, so the first theorem is actually the existence and uniqueness. So because uh, I'm actually using a DAE uh, theorem, so I have to make sure the initial condition of the system actually exists. So actually uh, assume the PP0. So actually that is the uh, structure pressure, like initial condition. So if we assume like enough smoothness of that PP0, so there will be uh, another like uh, initial conditions. So we do exist such initial conditions satisfy all the conditions. And also the linearized the Galerkin problem has a unique solution. So uh, I just like introduce like a word describe like basically the main steps to obtain this theorem. So here introducing a DAE system. So basically I'm introducing the matrix vector system right here and also confirm uh, the existence of all the initial conditions. So that is basically, I have to make sure uh, the compactability of the initial conditions. And then I'm um, try to, uh, because before I'm introducing the matrix factor system, right? So actually I have to confirm or prove the non-singularity of the pencil matrix. Uh, so in that case, we actually confirm the existence of the, uh, uh, of the uh, matrix vector system and then use uh, in-sweep condition to obtain or, uh, the uniqueness. And method is basically I assume like there are two solutions and they satisfy all the same uh, initial conditions and try to prove the difference of the two uh, solutions are zero. So that is basically the idea. 
And then after uh, showing the existence and uniqueness uh, of the linearized glucan problem, actually prove or show uh, the stability of all the results. So here is the problem uh, because before UP is actually in HD, right? So actually, if we have lower smoothness for the data, so the UPH is only in L2, L2. So basically that is not enough because we are using like fixed formulation. So at least we need to prove like the divergence of UPH is actually L2. So actually it's soft because if the data has like higher regularity, so we do have the UP. So UP here is actually in uh, capital uh, capital VPH right here. So that is HDF, uh, discretized the HDF space. So we do have like the uh, uh, divergence of the UPH is actually L2. However, this problem is actually still an issue later for the convergence from the linear to the non-linear. So I will talk about like later. So uh, here, so after uh, have the st stability of the linearized the glucan problem, so by weak compactness, so we could actually have the well postness of the linear linear problem like LP. So this is the continuous problem. So we could do that by weak compactness. So uh, the well postness. So like why we have to ensure the well postness of the linearized problem is because we are going to introduce an uh, iterative algorithm, so LP1. So this algorithm is actually based on the LP problem. So let's see uh, what is the uh, LP1 question. So basically LP1 is very similar with the linearized problem, but um, it's a sequence. And it, it depends on the index M right here. So still it is a linear problem because uh, for the viscous term right here, I'm actually using the CM minus one. So here, this term, this term, uh, and also this term, this term, this term, is still a linear system. So before uh, the well postness of LP actually enables the well postness of LP1. So uh, it's kind of like straightforward. And however, the problem is we still need to assume like high enough regularity for the uh, contraction terms. So we will see later. And also uh, after introducing the uh, iterative algorithms, actually uh, what I'm introducing is a contraction. So I can actually show uh, this system is actually approaching to the original non-linear uh, systems. So here is the theorem three. So uh, if we have like high enough regularity on the data, so based on the right-hand side of the equation, so we could actually have uh, all the sequence. So uh, let it define a unique sequence. So because we are using contraction, so it's unique. And also the unique sequence would converge to the weak solution of the original problem. And also, uh, like I said before, so if the uh, so if the data has less regularity, so the UP here is only in L2. So L2 is definitely not enough. So we need it to be in like HD, right? So actually we have that. So uh, this question, like if I write it, it's only like a few uh, like uh, lines, I can actually uh, show the theorem, but actually in the proof, it's a very like fatal question. So actually managing to solve this problem. So to try to show like the UP is actually indeed in capital VP. So actually I'm using uh, introducing a L1 uh, regularization uh, to actually uh, to control over the UP like in HD form. So it's actually very difficult. So because of this fatal problem, we almost gave up the mixed uh, formulation. Uh, like luckily, I have a way to solve it. So yeah, that is the problem. And also uh, the main steps is, uh, like I said, so, so the E U F M is actually the difference between the two solutions of the uh, algorithms. And then actually the first step is bound the difference between each uh, sequence uh, by E C M one. So because it's a corporate question, so basically we have that. So basically the result is the two uh, equations right here then I can actually choose the parameter to smaller than one. So it will be a contraction. 
And also, uh, like I said before, so the divergence, so this is the divergence. So actually I'm using an L1 norm. So I didn't show it because I don't want to like show too much details to bore the audience, right? So and then I extend the local result because I have to choose this system. So uh, this uh, parameter to be smaller than one. So it's just a local result. So the last step is I extend the local result globally in time. So basically that is the idea. And then I introduced the error analysis of the carpet system. So, uh, so this is actually for the Stokes and build system. And also this is for the uh, transport sub problems. And also uh, because we have, uh, we can see like clearly for the divergence of the Darcy velocity, it has like a lower convergence rate uh, because actually we're introducing an L1 norm to control this uh, norm right here. So actually the convergence rate is actually compromised a little bit. So this is a half, uh, before we don't have a half right here. And this is the conversion test basically uh, as I uh, come up with the very smooth uh, two solutions and calculate the right hand side and do the convergence test. And basically the, uh, so for the lower order conversion, so basically I'm using the lower fi uh, order uh, finite element space. Uh, so basically it, it has like uh, one convergence rate right here and right here, right? And it's better for the uh, displacement. So this is the displacement. It's actually approaching two. So this is a little bit like surprising for me. And also for the divergence of the Darcy velocity it's only like, we can say like it's only a half. So because this is why it's only a half it's, uh, it's actually the same like, with our like theoretical convergence rate and also for the transport it's only like one or two so it's actually the same and also for higher order like finite element space so it shows like higher uh, convergence rate and it's stable and also for the divergence we can say like it's one right mm. And then, so that is the simulation of a blood flow uh, and its transportation question. So this is uh, a vessel. And also the blue regions right here is the vessel structure. So it's the structure right here. So actually I'm using this continuous parameters for the buildups because the buildups would be like softer and it allows more fluid like penetrates through uh, the buildups. Like here, there is a bound right here. So the pressure is increasing right here. And also this is the uh, concentration of the low density liquid protein right here. So this is the uh, 2D model for a blood flow. So actually I'm very happy with the simulations right here because I'm not using like this continuous glucan, but the concentration is still like very stable. So it's a little bit surprising for me. And also uh, the second simulation is actually the flows through the proelastic media with channel networks. So here, uh, this is the channels. So it allow uh, the fluid flow through all the channels right here. So these regions are actually the uh, structures. So we could say it's the, cavi uh, it's the cavity model and we inject mercury from this side into this whole region. So this is actually the propagation of the uh, some like uh, underground water contaminants and it's actually uh, flows through all the channels. And also we can draw a conclusion uh, because actually I can see the videos of the concentration. So uh, the concentration uh, would choose a large channel to penetrate through because this one so here, this this is a larger, uh, larger. So this is a bifurcation. This one is a larger channel. So it will penetrate through the larger channel and then the smaller channel. And also like for the bifurcation here and also here. So it will like penetrate through the larger channel then the smaller channel right here. So that is the observation. And thank you uh, for your listening. Here is some like reference uh, I'm gonna I'm using for all the uh, theoretical work. And also thank you uh, for your time. And any questions? Thank you, Xingwang. I'll stop the recording now.